What's up? How you doing? I'm chilling, dude. I'm good. Your hair's looking majestic. You look like a proud lion on the prairie. Would you like some of it? I think you've given us both enough of your hair. I feel like you have too much. Too much what? Yeah. Hair. I feel like we need to... Uh, He's going to give you a haircut. Is this an intervention? You trap me in this little enclosed yeah. room? This isn't the podcast. Oh, God. Listen, Dan's got the razor. That's all I'm saying. Welcome back. Welcome back. What episode is <laughs> To episode six. Seven? <laughs> Welcome back to episode seven of Now We Gaming. As you can see, we're all here in person. Live and in color. So what are we talking about today? Today, I feel like it'd be a good uh, podcast to go back and talk about the Resident Evil 2 remake, which we did one year ago, mm -hmm. and the Resident Evil 3 remake that we did just yesterday. What about it? What about it? Yeah. Well, let's go with some context, first of all. So, Resident Evil 2, the original was made in 1998. Remake was made in 2019. So you're talking an 11-year gap in between the game and its remake. The first remake of Resident Evil, actually. Like, the first actual real remake. Like, they actually changed the game. Um, Not just a remaster? Yeah, it actually remade the game from the ground up. So... It, whenever the game first came out, Resident Evil 2, whenever the original came out, huge success. It beat out um, Super Mario 64. It beat out even Final Fantasy on its own console, the PS1. Uh, sold, what was it, half? It was three and a half million copies worldwide in the first month That's for Resident Evil 2. That's a lot. Especially in for 1998. Them. Yeah. And so Resident Evil 3 came out the next year, 1999. Whereas the remake came out in 2020. So you're still talking 11 year gap. But Resident Evil 3, when it came out, didn't have as big of a sale base. I think it sold 1 million units in its first month. 1 million units in its first month with 3.5 million over 10 years. 10 years to make 3.5 million sales? Yeah. Yep. On RE3? Mm -hmm. yeah. On RE3, where in the first month of RE2, they made 3 million. Interesting. So, RE2 was a huge success over RE3 back in the day. So, and what do you think contributed to that? Probably RE1 on or Resident Evil 1. Resident Evil 1 was a big success, rolling from that tide into Resident Evil 2. Plus, Resident Evil 2 just being an actual good game. Yeah, that's Whereas, true. I guess back then, a lot of sales were really dictated by reviews. It's, yeah, it's predecessors. Yeah. People saying, like, go buy this game. I think I think it's wild that RE2 sold more than Final Fantasy VII, who had seven previous games. That's a little nuts. Yeah. Although Final Fantasy before VII was really a Japanese title. It didn't have a huge fan base in America, whereas Resident Evil had a huge fan base in both quadrants. True. Yeah. But so, aside, I think like the first handful of Final Fantasy games were even ported. Yeah. To yeah. They even had yeah they had different like <clears throat> numbered titles like yeah. uh, what. Like two over in Japan, like we didn't even get Resident or Final Fantasy two. Yeah, like we got we went like one and then like what four or five. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, Final Fantasy is a whole different ballpark than that. But so Resident Evil two and Resident Evil three is what what we're gonna be talking about here. I know you played them both for us. So what are the general impressions that you got coming from the beginning of Resident Evil two and Resident Evil three? Like just right off the bat, as soon as the game starts. What's your impression of Resident Evil 2 to Resident Evil 3? How did it make you feel? Did you feel like you were in danger? Was it immersive? So I think it's a little bit of a loaded question because I got to experience all of Resident Evil 2 before I experienced, you know, the beginning of RE3. Yeah. But trying to separate any of that, the beginning of RE2, you're at the gas station and you're going through all those motions and they're kind of teaching you. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the police station and it's kind of like that central hub that you... You're like, oh, I'm, I'm safe now. After you've been through, like, all this shit at the gas station, you're like, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. And they have you crawl through and do all that fun stuff. And in Resident Evil 3, you start off in the apartment. And mm -hmm. it's, like, just instantly this fucking scripted fight with Nemesis. Uh -huh. And I don't know. I kind of feel that it's probably a general theme inside of 3, but... I feel like I didn't have a lot of choice in what I was doing. Yeah. Because in the beginning, you're just 
running through a scripted hallway, yeah. jumping on a scripted on rails, fucking staircase, yeah. going through a building. Like everything just felt so on rails. Just linear. Yeah. Just go here. Where I didn't really feel much of that in Resident Evil 2, especially not in the beginning. Yeah. Um, I kind of felt that way once you kind of open that crypt and you go underground because, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you literally have to go underground at that point. Yeah. But up until that point, it felt like this kind of exploration game where you're branching out, doing puzzles, and just figuring out your own way through the world. Where Nemesis is like, hey, keep keep going. Yeah. Just keep going straight, my man. Just keep running, bro. Keep going straight. We got you. Don't worry. <laughs> do, you think, um, do you think there's a big connection between... So do you feel more of a connection with either one of the characters? So like... Uh, so Jill, Jill Valentine, coming from Resident Evil 1, you actually have... You've seen Jill Valentine before. You've played as Jill Valentine before. You've experienced a story around her. She's been a main character already. Do you think there's a big difference seeing Jill in Resident Evil 3 now as opposed to Leon Kennedy, who's this rookie cop. You've never seen him in a game before. This is his first time playing as him. Do you think that um, Jill kind of has a leg up on Leon? Do you feel more of a connection? Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, I played the earlier one. I played RE1. I played I've played Nemesis before mm-hmm. the remake, and I didn't really have a lot of experience with two in general. Mm-hmm. So I think that yeah, I probably had a lot more connection with Jill. But into it. by the end of it, like I don't feel like they built anything onto Jill's character in yeah. this version. What about Leon? And that's so like playing as Leon. Do you think there was more of a build up and a connection base to that character? I think that they're probably. There, there definitely is in terms of, for me because I had no idea what the game was about. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like how it just played out in those isolated games, I'd say yeah, they did a better job cinematically bringing you to care about Leon than you care about Jill. Yeah. And I think part of that is like Jill is just like a fucking essentially a can she just can't die, bro. Yeah. Like there's never any worry of her dying. And yeah. I think. Just kind of as a side, even when Ada gets, like, thrown in the dumpster with, like, the stab wound, the broken glass, I was like, I hope she's okay, man. She's going to get sepsis or something. Mm-hmm. But, like, every time Jill got her ass beat, I'm like, she's going to get up. Yeah. She gets stabbed with a huge fucking poison steak, and it's like, yeah, she'll be fine. That's what we were talking about. Like, just, serum. just in the opening cut scene, she oh. gets slapped up against a fucking wall. Choke she slam. Goes, yeah, she gets choked out. She literally fucking, uh, the car explodes and fucking sends her into the other car wall or whatever. She literally gets thrown, projected into something. She gets up to the roof, hits Nemesis with a car, drops off of a building. Drives the car off the building. Drives the car off the building. On the ground. Uh, straight into the ground, nose point, And then rolls gets up and fucking car. rolls. Yeah. Not yeah, to mention really being impregnated by a fucking spider. <laughs> Not to mention getting needled in the fucking poison through the neck. Almost a zombie. Yeah, like tr- there's a train wreck. She survives. Oh, yeah. oh my god! I even think about that. All of the civilians die. That Everybody. they were going to rescue. What? Didn't doesn't Leon get shot at one point? I don't remember, know. like the crazy scientist he, shoots her and later leaves he leaves him in the out. hallway. Oh yeah, yeah. she dresses. So his so the tanker explodes and sends yeah. Leon in the car, yeah. and then he gets shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's about. It. And he and he's out. That's his out of the game. Is that he's. Yeah. Passed out from just from yeah. gunshot wounds. Yeah. yeah, from one gunshot wound. Yeah. And that's not even like taking into account any of the unscripted stuff. Yeah. Like that's all scripted things. Yeah, it's all mm-hmm. just the scripted stuff. Yeah. yeah. There was plenty of times that was unscripted where like I got absolutely fucking butt cheeks clapped by Nemesis. <laughs> yeah, and we're just like we're back. like, holy <laughs> fuck, dude, I'm dead. But even with those situations, like Nemesis, like that point where Nemesis pins you up against the wall mm-hmm. and like chokes you the fuck out and then drops you and then chill. I just get in up and game Joe gets back up. I'm like, that's an insta kill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're expecting the game over screen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but uh, so do you think? Uh, do you think they do a better job of creating Leon as a character in Resident Evil Two Remake as opposed to Jill in Resident Evil Three Remake? Because I didn't really get any. 
per- personally, I think they actually built Leon as like Leon felt like a character as he was mm-hmm. when the game's like even through his just minor dialogues. Whenever he sees the zombies, like what the hell? We're like, oh shit! And like he actually feels like a person in this mm-hmm. world. And, like, he has that connection with Claire, which is, like, a budding romance sort of thing. Mm-hmm. He has, like, the puppy dog lust for Ada. Like, <laughs> Ada strings him along. Yeah. He feels like a character in the world. It makes sense. Whereas Jill is, like, gets the fucking absolute shit kicked out of her. She's a badass. She's a veteran. She's done this shit before. The only real, like, correspondence she has with other characters is uh, Carlos, who makes no sense. They talk like three times and then like by the end of the game she's like I'm in love with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like fucking they're gonna move in after this. Mm-hmm. Like he's already got a key to the apartment like he's coming over later. Yeah, he does. And then like I guess Russian guy. She hates Russian guy who's just Russian bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know a t- I don't know the lore through and through mm-hmm. between all the Resident Evils but if I had to assume I'd say they probably relied too much on people already knowing Jill. Jill. Yeah. So they didn't have yeah. to build her into yeah. their game. Like, and maybe that's a respectable decision so people don't have to re- like live, oh, this is Jill Valentine. She's a special agent doing X, Y, and Z. But at the same time, then anybody that comes in new mm-hmm. doesn't know anything about her. Yeah, completely. Agree. And then they just don't build on her. She's just this impenetrable fucking meat shield that just complains in cinematics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> the, literally the end... Like, she complains. She's like, this has got to be the last time. Like, yeah. <laughs> who wrote the dialogue in this game? Yeah, it's, it's something, man. I don't know. So, RE2 and RE3 is games. Like, what do you think of the overall story comparatively of RE2 compared to RE3? It's just so interesting because they're happening days apart in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, so you're pretty much going over the same spot. Like, you go to the police station that you've already been in, in RE2, in RE3, and you're like, oh, I know this place! And you're seeing, like, these objects, which I loved going back to the police station. I thought that was Mm -hmm. so cool. Like, hey, here's a spot you've already seen. It's the exact same thing as RE2 Remake. So you're seeing, like, the exact same environment. You're like, I miss this place. I know this place. And then, like, you're going around, like, finding items and, like, actually affecting the building. Mm-hmm. Like, there's one cutscene where you blow the hole in the bathroom, which is already blown open in RE2 once Leon gets mm-hmm. there. You're like, that's what that is. That's so cool. Yeah. And then there's other things, like there's items all over the place that you're picking up that you would pick up as Leon. Yeah. And you're just like, I, I can't, you can't pick this up. Yeah, you can't. In the same place. Yeah, you can't pick this up as two characters in the same spot. But they literally is the same engine and the same code so they just left the lockers the same they're like yeah we don't got time to change the codes or change what locker yeah, they just left all the loot in there they're like don't worry no one will fucking think about the fact that jill already looted this and now leon won't get don't, it even don't he- move it over one locker yeah just- yeah don't use different lockers don't use different locations yeah. like it's so dumb and the fact that whenever you go in the weapon room and you open up the lockers, you're opening up the same lockers that Leon opens up. Yeah, for the like same you, items. Yeah, for the same I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, guys? The, and, like, again, it's uh, the immersing yourself in that story is even if they were just different items, like you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you'd be like, okay, at some point, somebody was like, where did those shells go? And then they just put the hit punch yeah. in there. He's yeah. like, derp, 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 let me yeah. go ahead and store this in here instead. Yeah, you know, it was it was something else. And I feel like that also goes to the point of R2 has mo- more motivation behind it. Yeah. I guess you could say. Did the city get nuked at the end of two? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was the end cinematic on two? The end cinematic was you guys drive out in the train, right? You guys beat you beat um, the tyrant at the bottom, and then why do I feel like it, yeah? It definitely gets nuked. So I don't remember. We I'm didn't just really watch that. I'm just trying to figure out like if these stories are, are crisscrossing mm-hmm. and taking place da- days apart. Mm-hmm. Like literally, they got out barely in Nemesis, which means obviously that story plays out at the same time mm-hmm. as two, yeah. unless two didn't blow up. But then it's like. Did Nemesis and Tyrant ever, like, meet up? And they just had, like, a... a they're just like, hey, how's it going? What's the status on your tests? That would have been super cool, right? Or seen, like, something left over by... Like, them, Ty- or them just walk by and see each other or some shit? Yeah. Be like, Leon, you going for Leon? Yeah, I'm gonna get Jill. Okay, see you, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out, like, 
how it all ties together yeah. and like with this whole like continuity thing of you know if they truly are happening at the same time how are all these things I feel like they did like the fan service whereas like you know that first hallway that you go through in the police station where you take your left and you mm-hmm. go through and then you see like the guy get killed by the like, yeah you actually they see the carnage that gets set up for already too so you walk through it later they set that up and they set like the bathroom up but it felt lazy it just they, felt like what can we do yeah just throw that in they had People really good it. ideas and then they phoned them in it feels like they didn't have enough time to actually execute what they wanted to do with it yeah yeah so if we're going over how i want to branch this out is i'm since we both have come to the conclusion that we love re2 i personally don't think there's any flaws in re2 i think it's perfect how it is like i don't i couldn't see them changing any a part 10 of the out of game, 10 game? I think it's a. It exists. I think it's a. I think it's a nine point eight. The only okay. the only minus I give to it is that the storyline is a little cheesy. Okay. But I also don't knock them too much because all Resident Evil stories are a little cheesy. It's <laughs> so, a zombie thing. Yeah. Like, it, there has to be cheese. Yeah, there has to be a little bit of cheese. Zombies love cheese. So how I really wanted to do this was to say all the good things about RE two. Mm-hmm. Because I have a lot of good things to say about RE2. Mm-hmm. And then mirror that into RE3 and see if see how they either changed it or made it different and how that affected the game overall. The first thing I would say to that statement before mm-hmm. we move on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if I agree that Resident Evil 2 is such a good game. That's fine. I do have quarrels with it, which we can maybe go over later. But mostly like mine we'll are... Around user experience and UI, yeah, because like well, actually playing the game was kind of tough in some situations of how is you supposed to use the items and all that shit. But. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that you have to agree with me. That's the perfect game, but yeah. I just want to go over these mechanics, and then you can tell me what your experience was, yeah. and then just because the 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 podcast isn't sucking Resident Evil 2's dick. I know. I'm just putting it's, my opinion out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like taking both Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 shaft mm-hmm. in both hands and seeing which one measures out better. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So, if we were to start off, I want to start big picture. Let's go with the graphical improvements. <clears throat> Over I the past series? From, from Resident Evil 2 to Resident Evil 2 Remake. Or from, we'll go from uh, Resident Evil 6 <clears throat> or like the Resident Evil series to like this remake. Like, the graphics on Resident Evil 2 were fucking gorgeous. They pushed it to its limits. Yep. And they did a very good job. I it's, think, it's what I imagined I was playing as a kid. Yeah. And I, yeah, I guess we say that a lot, but... It's what you saw in your head. For real. Yeah. It's, it really is. Yeah. And I think even when the engine didn't perform in certain spots, they did a good job of hiding that with lighting and mm-hmm. with, like... They used different tricks that worked really well to make the graphics seem... Like, they were fucking top-notch. They, they were smart about it. Did, did we experience that same thing with Resident Evil 3? Were there any spots in Resident Evil 3 where you were like, uh... Ooh. I mean, overall, from my experience, it just seemed like I was playing, like, a DLC or, like, extension to 2 in yeah. terms of that. Like... It did feel like that. We, we reused the police station. We reused some of, the, like, the scenic outlook stuff. Um, but later on into the game like when you get near the bridge and you do like i think the second nemesis fight Mm -hmm. you can kind of see it like taper off and become like an on rails like 100 percent. they're like very like these environments they the environments felt more like the older games where they had these fixed cameras Mm -hmm. these fixed cameras that they're like yes we designed the scene perfectly like you get into these scenes and it's like they were designed in a specific way but yes you can still do 360 degree camera Mm-hmm. It, whereas, like, exploring the police station and all the stuff in RE2, like, it felt like an open living world. Yeah. Like, all the, like, the latter half of 3 just felt really more stupid. static. Yeah, it was like, yeah. you go through the bridge, you then get sucked into underground, you go into this warehouse, and it's, like, these close quarters that are just, like, so staticky, and it's, like... Boring. I don't know. Yeah. It felt, it felt like, yes, the graphics were better... But I guess more of, like, the game design itself lacked yeah. in that terms. Which kind of hurt in the long run. Yeah. What did you think of the voice acting? Did you... Because I thought... I loved Leon's voice actor. Oh. And I loved the play between Leon and Claire. I think they did a good job of, like, conveying their characters. Which I wasn't so sure of with Jill. Because I feel like she didn't... She didn't have anything that humanized her that made her relatable as a character, like a playable character. I didn't put myself in Jill's perspective, but I did in Leon. 
whenever I played Resident Evil 2 Remake, I was like, oh, Leon, like, that's me. I'm, that's my character. Like, I'm playing as him. I put myself in his shoes whenever I was walking through those and making those decisions. It was just something about, it's like you're saying, that just that intermittent dialogue that Leon had just Mm -hmm. didn't seem as present, if at all, with Jill. Jill, yeah. And whether or not it's to imply the experience, like we were saying, of the the two characters and yeah if you're if you're first day on the job as a police officer it's a zombie apocalypse yeah the whole time you're probably gonna be like what the holy fuck fuck." yeah (laughs) but jill just seems so quiet and so far as like if you saw a zombie eating somebody else's ass and you're the only one there yeah you'd probably be like huh and you, you'd make some kind of yeah. exclamation yeah. whatever it may be so. and there was more with uh, Leon there was more characters actually built in. like he was in the police station there were actually other police like they did yeah. a good job of being like here's the desks of all the police there's notes yeah. like whenever you walk into the thing it says like welcome Leon or whatever <laughs> like they had like an actual party plan for you being there you had um, Marvin you had Claire you had the little girl you mm-hmm. had the scientist like there was just so many characters built into this story with Leon Whereas Jill, it was like Carlos. Yeah. Weird guy in, in train, old guy in train who dies. For about 10 minutes. Yeah, Russian guy. Like, that's it. Do we do we take dialogue into voice acting, or are those two separate things? I think we can two for one then. You can? Why would, what was your quarrel? Because, I mean, dialogue in three is just dog shit the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Like, her inner monologues at the beginning, and <laughs> just like... It was... There's nothing... Good. There's nothing great about it. Yeah, like the voice acting is it's, 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 right. The voice acting is awesome that they brought fresh new voice to a game that's so old mm-hmm. in a remake. That's awesome, but there was nothing in the dialogue that pulled me to Jill. Yeah, where like Leon, you know, you're saying, yeah, you know, you're running around. He's making comments about stuff that's happening real time in the world. He's having his conversations with people, and then Jill runs up to a train, talks to fucking Bill from Left for Dead. And then meets fucking Carlos or whatever. And he's yeah. like, what's up? <laughs> what's up, dude? It is. He's it's smoking just, a cigarette. I, I didn't even think he? about that. so perfect. He's wearing a beret, isn't oh, he? fuck, man. He's yeah. got a white beard, isn't Holy he? Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That boy got inspired oh, so from there, dude. Yeah. But, like, she talks to Carlos, and then Carlos sends you on a wild goose chase to do something that you're clearly not fit to do because you don't have the fucking like ARs and stuff. Yeah. And it's like this fake dialogue. Take your pistol like, and go do go this. over there and do this. And then he came back and he's like, oh, you actually did it. Nice dialogue, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I okay. feel like, um, that's Tony Hawk. When you do the cool trick over the gap, that's when you say, oh, you actually did it. Yeah. But when you go like reset four breakers to get to the train to turn on, on. Yeah. yeah, the dialogue should be more like, holy shit. I appreciate or like that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there wasn't any like character building at all. Sick. It was you're going. Sick combo. <laughs> it was very forgettable. Yeah, and three. It really was. It really was. I didn't I didn't enjoy it. Our so boy in the there. fucking police station, bro. Marvin, Marvin dude, Mar- I was I, I was so connected to that character. When Marvin died, yeah, and you had to put him down like a dog. Yeah. And then when we saw him in three again, mm-hmm. it just brought all those emotions back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. None of those characters in three are gonna bring emotions I don't back. Care. Yeah, I don't give a shit about any of them. But and also like they didn't do a good job of explaining in three. They didn't explain situations at all. Like Resident Evil two, they explained stuff. Like you learned um, what Tyrant was. Mm-hmm. Like what was going on. Like there was this huge conspiracy. Like you learned this stuff. Whereas Resident Evil three, they were like, "There's some notes that you, you can read that help you." You didn't see bit. the intro cinematic. What mm-hmm. Nemesis was? What was Nemesis? He was some, a person who got injected by a T-virus, dude. That's cool. Why is he hunting everybody? Bro, did you see? Because he's angry. <laughs> he's mad. He's pissed <laughs> off about it. He got hit by Claire right when he got out of the womb. He got knocked off a fucking parking deck. It's so fucking stupid. You mean Jill? Jill, yeah, so Jill. So fucking stupid, dude. They didn't clarify the storyline at all. It, it just, it, it fucking shows. I hate it. I, I don't, the storyline as a whole for three, not very good. I mean, two was a little cheesy storyline based, but it made mm-hmm. sense, and there were characters that built it. They yeah. they built up an atmosphere around it, like they actually tried to describe what was going on and like why things were happening. Mm-hmm. So, with Resident Evil Two remake and Resident Evil Three remake, do you think there is a issue of accessibility, being that Jill is a recurring character? Recurring character. 
Which, I mean, I guess with the remakes, Leon at this point is a recurring character also. Because now that the remake is out in 2020 or 2020 or 19. But it's still the retelling of his first story. Yeah, it's retelling his first story, yeah. What do you mean accessibility? So, well, I think I, we kind of touched on it a little bit just in the sense that RE1 and 2 only came out on PS1. Yeah. And just relative to how many people own consoles in general now, the two remakes came out on... PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. So just how many more people could just even experience yeah. that story? Yeah, like, you and me never even owned a PS1. So yeah. like we never had really yeah. first-hand experience with Resident Evil games. Yeah, I mean, my we experience is hanging out with friends playing it. Yeah, we got remake experience. With, like re- when they remade Resident Evil 1 for the GameCube is when I first yeah. played Resident Evil. Yeah. So you're saying like accessibility to play the original stories? Yeah, like I guess original stories to the remakes. So like how many people actually played, played the one. remake or played the originals and then came to the remakes. Okay. Do you think they're more accessible now than... I mean, they're definitely makes, more accessible. Do you think that makes a difference in the remake from 2 to 3? I think that makes it better for gamers in general to be able to play it because, like you said, like I didn't grow up with a Sony. Yeah. And like I, would, I just bought it on PC and you bought it on Xbox. And like we can play it anywhere. But in terms of like... Uh, being able to do the original story, I don't know that it matters a ton to play Nemesis. Like, you shouldn't have to play Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 3 non-remakes to understand these games. Yeah. And I think that just playing Resident Evil 3, it's not an isolated story that you can enjoy. Just playing Resident Evil 2, you you could just play RE2 and be done and you'd be like, wow, that was a great experience. Yeah. But, like, if you just did 3, I think you would be like, you have more questions. Yeah, you're like, what did answers. I just do? Yeah, <laughs> like, why? So, like, if that's what you mean from accessibility, then yeah. I would agree, like, it's very hard to understand what's happening in 3, for me. And I played 3 the most. Yeah. I played the original yeah. 3 the most, and I still was confused half the time. Yeah. And I think part of that is far more changed from the remake of 3 from the original than for 2. Two yeah. is almost oh, like yeah. a shot for shot remake yeah. of the original. Yeah, they just where, polished certain spots up. Yeah, they did make some changes yeah. to the story in several places. Yep. Yeah. Through three. Creative yeah. freedom, dude. Why do you think they started with Resident Evil Two remake? Why do you why do you think there wasn't a Resident Evil One remake? I think it's like you one. said, the fact that they've already done it once. It's yeah. kind of like um they've, the done, game. they've done it twice now. Yeah. They remade it for the GameCube and then they remade it also again for the Xbox 360. Did they, I think they might have even done the Xbox One. Did they remake it or did it's, they just straight port it? They ported it. Yeah. I mean, they remade it for the GameCube. Yeah. And then they... But they ported that GameCube. I think they ported the GameCube. 360. No. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. We'll double check. <laughs> it's just Well, it's just weird because like yeah. they didn't remake... Like it didn't get like a remake like Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 got. Yeah. It just got like a... Like, they upscaled the resolution. Remaster. Yeah. It, it got the remaster. It didn't get the remake. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Why do you think they didn't actually remake the first Resident Evil? Because even, even like, the reworked still has tank controls. It doesn't yeah. have, like, an open world mm-hmm. move camera around. Like, that'd be awesome. Why so, do you think they didn't bring it back to the mansion? Personally, I believe it's, it's a case of the original story of RE1 can still be experienced in a more accessible way Mm -hmm. than just the original RE2 or RE3. That's very true. Um, Because you either need to have original hardware for those or you need to emulate it. As opposed to you're more likely, I guess, to be able to get RE1 off of... RE1 you can get right off the A digital download. Yeah. Yeah. So that there's less pressure to to make that, at least if, if your goal as... The developer is to exactly have that story available for people to experience. Yeah. And just a bit of a tangent, but one of my favorite games of all time is System Shock 2. Mm-hmm. And that's never got a remake. And the original one did because it was so damn old. Yeah. But you can experience System Shock 2 as is and get the full story. And that, again, is available on Steam. It's available on digital platforms. Mm-hmm. So... Do you, well, do you, well, does it need it? I think is the real question. With the with the remake of Resident Evil, yeah. do you think that they're going to continue on and do Resident Evil 4? Or do you think they're going to drop back and do Resident Evil 1? 
I would love for them. I personally, in my heart, I want them to do Resident Evil 1 because I love Resident Evil 2 so much, the remake, that I would yeah. love to be able to do that in Resident Evil 1. Mm -hmm. Because Resident Evil 1 was my favorite Resident Evil before Resident Evil 2 remake came out. Yeah. Now Resident Evil 2 remake is my favorite Resident Evil, and I'd love for them to polish up my the first one, my true love. Mm hmm. I'm just trying to think through, like, the thought process of starting at 2 instead of 1. Yeah. And I can see that if... Because it appears that they're using the same engine for 8, right? Or whatever the new one is. Yeah, they're using the same engine with 8 as in... Village. Yeah. yeah. It, it looks like it. I'm not sure. I think it, I think they're just calling it the RE engine now, and they're just rolling mm -hmm. with it. But, like, mm -hmm. I think that <clears throat> coming from, like, a product development background and like working on products mm -hmm. i can see that if their plan was to use that all along maybe they did it as like a test uh, to get the engine out smart. and see how it like performs on different consoles and you know what would actually uh, back up that point is the fact that resident evil 2 is the best selling resident evil so it makes sense if you're going to do a test to choose the one that would sell the strongest the strongest which yeah. would be the one that was most popular mm -hmm. then too so you can really focus on polishing up yep. your first love. Yep. Oh, God, please. <laughs> yeah, I just think that... No dodging. I think that they have... If they take their time mm -hmm. with the other ones and they don't use such creative freedoms and mm -hmm. make things so linear mm -hmm. that they could have a lot more RE2 success remake on their hands. Like, they have a good formula. Take these old games that people love Put them in a new engine, put some more polish and love into them. Yeah. Like you don't have to you don't have to do rocket science to change that. Yeah. Like make the environments look pretty, give them a 360, you know, view of the environments and mm -hmm. move on. Yeah. And I think if they can just like slow their roll and maybe get the next one right, I'll have faith. But like right now I'm kind of on the edge because like RE2 is extremely fun. Yeah. Three was frustrating at the end. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't really have a whole lot. Literally going through three, it was only a six hour playthrough, but it felt like we were just pushing through, like, come on, we just gotta beat the game. Yeah. Come on, just get it, to the end. It was a lot of fun in terms of nostalgia to be able to see some of the stuff from two that I've just recently experienced. Yeah. And to like see some of the things that I did remember in three. Mm -hmm. Like that was great. But like the mechanics and the gameplay is just they didn't add up. Like That's true. The nostalgia goggles could not carry me to yeah. the end. Well, it's, like halfway through, we're like, oh. Yeah. This, uh, oh, let's, oh, let's start talking about some of the minor things in the games then. Because I want to talk about like the little things that mm -hmm. they, that they, because re, re, RE2 was like complete rework. All these things are brand new. They had to make executive decisions on what's going to be in this game. Let's go ahead and check out some of the things that they did for RE2. And then see if they tweaked them or how they proceeded to translate them into RE3 and if they worked better or if they sure. fall, fell a little flat. Um, one of the first things I really liked with the RE2 remake is the mapping system. Mm -hmm. I love the ability to pull up your map. Your map shows you blue rooms you've done. Like you completely got everything out of them. Red rooms, you still have something in there that you can collect. Mm -hmm. And the fact that if you see what you're trying to collect, so if you visually like get close and actually look at the item, it'll actually put it on the map for you. So like if you're like, oh, there's an herb right there, you see it, it'll show up on your map. You'll be like, I can circle back and get that later. And you know like red rooms, you still have something to do or something to grab in them. I thought that was awesome for the Resident Evil 2 remake because it, it streamlined the, the play a little bit more as opposed to the original. I have to double check, but I think that there were door indicators in, three. in the original. Like, to show which door you could go in and out of? Uh, of anything, of like having any color coding system. Yeah. Like I think there was a door signifier, but it wouldn't be like red, red or white or blue or anything yeah. like that, whether or not you've passed through it or if you've that seen was, it, it's locked or that not. That was really nice, yeah. yeah. So that, again, just helps with navigation and just really streamlines mm -hmm. your ability to uh, yeah. experience. You don't got to spend 30 minutes trekking across the police station and being like, oh, like, that's why I didn't go through this door because I need this key. Yeah. You can just look at it and be like, oh, okay, I can't go there. Mm -hmm. You could map it out and be like, okay, this is where I need to go or I need to check this area. It was so much more streamlined and made it so more, so much, it it made you want to play the game a lot more. Exactly. I didn't want to, I didn't want to invest fucking 20 hours in this campaign. Mm -hmm. Like I want to have fun with it. Especially if, five or six hours of that total is wandering around aimlessly looking for something either you looking know. for something you already had 
or finding something that you didn't know was ultimately trivial. Yeah. What do you think about the mapping system overall? I thought it was amazing. Yeah. I didn't understand that it was a thing in the game. I was running around at first in RE2 and I was like, I don't fucking know what I'm doing. And then you guys are like, you should probably like look at these things and it kind of helps you find out where to go. Yeah. I was like, okay. And then you can kind of puzzle piece it together yeah. where you need Espe- to go. Especially with a game like 2 where it really is puzzle driven. Mm-hmm. Like, you could literally walk around the police station and if you didn't know which rooms you had 100% vetted and checked, mm-hmm. then it would just take forever. Yeah, you could spend yeah. hours just walking around. Do you think uh, RE3 did a good job with the mapping system still? Because it looked like they just carbon, like, they just copied it. Yes, I think it's, I, I didn't see, for me, the, the mapping system in 3 was, is there loot in this room? Yeah. That's it. It wasn't like, what door can I go through? Yeah. Is it, cause I didn't know, I didn't need to know what door I had to go through. It's obvious. They were all fucking <laughs> open. It was a linear fucking straight playthrough. Yeah. And like, it was just like, have I got the loot in this room? Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. Yeah. Keep on going. Like, like, I need to backtrack to open that one box because I found the key right here. Exactly. Yeah. And we can, we can touch base on that, but like in two... If you watch the playthrough, like, I barely really opened the map until I was, like, fuck. Like, hanging my head against a wall. Yeah. I'm like, what What the fuck am I doing wrong here? I'm yeah. like, oh, that room, I didn't go to it yet. Yeah. In three, there was so much fucking loot in this game yeah. that I'm like, holy fuck, I'm picking up ammo. I'm picking up fucking ammo. I'm picking up fucking ammo. I'm picking up grenades. I'm picking up bombs. I'm picking up shit 24 fucking seven, yeah. dude. And that's a big point, because... Resident Evil 2 Remake had a lot of item management. Like, it had a lot of, like, I need to go to the box, drop this, pick up this. But it was more based around puzzle items. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't ever have a surplus Mm -hmm. of ammo. You're not like, oh, man, I need to get my 40 rounds of this out so I can go here. You were like, I need this puzzle to do that. I need to pick that out. And then I'm going to go here, so I'll take this with me. I need this key. It was never, like, RE3 was just like... What ammo do I want? What? How am I going to kill these zombies? Like, key items, what's that? <laughs> what was it that Dan said at the end? If you have 13 items or more in your box, that there's probably something wrong. Yeah. I just had, like, heal, 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 ammo. Yeah, it's like what you're saying is more often in RE2, it was, I want two spaces open or three because I'm going to go do a little bit of stuff. I have to stash a key item. Mm-hmm. Because I have my one heal, my yep. one set of rounds. Yep. But in RA three, like you look in the stash, and it's there's twenty shotgun shells. <laughs> and why are there twenty shotgun shells in the stash? Because you have twenty four in your inventory. Yeah, you already have a full slot plus you already reloaded. Yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Did you guys like the? Uh, just a little key point that they added that I like that they did. Um, whenever you were done using a key or an item in the game, like bolt cutters, once you actually got done using it for its last thing, it would put that little X on it. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you can get rid of this now. Yeah. So that way you didn't actually hold on to it the whole fucking game. That, I think that was a nice quality of life addition that yeah. actually both games held up on. I think without that, it would be very hard for me to ever throw an item away. Yeah, you'd have I would just go put it in my box. box. I'd just go put it in the box and be yeah, like, I'm, I'm done with this shit. I remember that being a problem with me in Resident Evil 1 whenever I first played it. Mm-hmm. I, I held on to all the fucking keys. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing I would say about it, though, is like... I use the fucking like lockpick or whatever. Or I use the bolt cutters. And then it's like, I have a full inventory and I go to pick something up. Why doesn't it just get rid of the item for me? Yeah. Like, why the fuck do I have to? If I can't use it, put the item down, yeah. go in my inventory, go to the thing, hit discard. Are you sure you want to discard this item that you can't even use anymore? <laughs> Discarding it means it's gone forever. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me close my inventory. Let me pick up that item and put it in my inventory now. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. It's you, you went through all these steps to make it good for people. Like, just automate that yeah. one thing. Yeah, you already streamlined it. Why not mm-hmm. finish the process? Especially, like, I understand it. You know, first iteration, like in two, maybe they didn't see that. Maybe they didn't realize that was a problem. Yeah. But when you go from two to three, like, learn and improve on the engine. Yeah. Make it more streamlined. I feel like they didn't improve on enough in three. They just kept I mean, the same stuff. Even they didn't try to polish anything. It's like, it worked fucking copy yeah. paste it like it's like i said it feels like fucking uh gearbox rolls up and makes a dlc for halo yeah. like they just 
some company rolled up and was like, oh, RE engine, we'll make three for you. Yeah. Here you go. We used your engine. We didn't improve on the engine. We just made the exact game. Same. Yeah. You want to know what they did change, though, mm-hmm. that I really want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And it's going to get your blood boiling. The, let's do defensive items yeah. versus dodging. Yeah. So, Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil 2 had defensive items. If you had a knife in your inventory, a zombie pounced on you, you had the option to use up your defensive items, stab your knife into him to get him off and you don't take any damage. Great. You could kill a zombie, you could even pick your knife back up. There were flash grenades you could use defensively when something grabs you. Frag grenades you can use defensively. They had a taser in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, there were all these items that you can use defensively. Now, Resident Evil 3 doesn't have any defensive. If a zombie jumps on you, you're taking damage, first Mm -hmm. off. You could struggle. Instead of taking two points of damage, you can take one. Have we confirmed that that's really what struggle does? I mean, there was no point that in the game where you didn't get bit. I got literally you just... I you just were spamming that shit like you were playing I Mario Party. I gave up struggling at the end. Was I was pointless. like, this fucking sucks. Like, yeah, I'm it's not fun. A. It's terrible. <laughs> at no point was it fun. And they added... So they got rid of defensive items. They added dodging. Mm-hmm. Dodging, you could juke around enemy attacks. But... If you juked around enemy attacks and you didn't do it at the perfect timing, it it's didn't do shit. In fact, it could hurt you. Yeah, it could actually not, fuck you up. Because it would put you in a position, movement-wise, of how you're trying to traverse a room. Yep. That you're only doing that dodge to not take damage. And so it, being in a bad spot and having taken the damage, you're more likely to have to take another point of damage yep. just to get to where you're going. How'd you feel about your uh, the dodging in the new art Resident Evil 3? It was very unforgiving. Mm-hmm. And I and I was playing on normal. Yep. I played Jedi Fallen Order on Grandmaster. Uh-huh. And I felt like that was unforgiving when you messed up. Yeah. Like in in Gr- Jedi Fallen Order, when I dodged and I got hit, I was like, "Oh yeah, dude, I fucked that up." I, I was like, I'm, "I'm fucking bad." When I dodged in Resident Evil 3, I'm like, RNG, please. Yeah. Please. I feel like I did that at the perfect time. Let's and see. I think that a lot of that goes back to like, I'm not a very patient person. Yeah. And I probably don't pay attention at times where maybe they were trying to teach me how to do dodge. But like, it went from zero to like, it went from, hey, you're fighting one zombie to you're fighting 10 zombies all the time, every fucking time. Yeah. Like, there was never another time for me to actually try to fucking practice my dodge. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, anytime I did dodge, when I got the perfect, I was like, hell yeah, dude, I'm fucking good, dude. I just fucking lucked out. Yeah. And then it's like, I dodge and I'm like, literally dodge. <laughs> I can see a zombie. He's jumping. I'm like, fuck yeah. Nope. He he just auto aimed, dude. He used a magnet and he's yeah. on me. He just turned with you as you were dying. He's like, ah, yeah. don't worry, dude. I'll grab you anyway. Let me give you this little hug here. Give you a little kiss on the neck. So from RE2 to RE3, uh-huh. I fucking could. Be, I don't know if it's because I'm bad mm-hmm. or if the dodging is bad. I fucking hated dodging. I never learned it. Six hours of gameplay, I never learned how to do it. Okay? And then in 2, whenever I got attacked and I had the defensive item, It's just pressing a fucking button, dude. Yeah. It's so much more enjoyable and more... It feels so much more rewarding for me because I know it's a consistent thing I can do. Yeah. Like, I don't know if, like... Maybe if I was a god at dodging and figured out how to do it, I would feel good about it, but I just never did. I think it just comes down to, like, the difference between, uh, like, a passive and an active as far as defending yourself. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's, it's exciting, quote unquote to do a quick time event i feel like most people are over quick time events just yeah, in general it's there's true. a time and a place a hundred percent but i think it's really about and like like we're talking about the the how the ammo conservation the amount of zombies that differs in the games is really what drives your decision making and being able to choose when you are going to lose your knife knowing that it's going to break or being able to choose to maybe you want to use that grenade for three zombies but you're going to stuff it in this guy's mouth because you don't have any healing items so i just it, it felt more strategic in re2 yeah you had flash grenades in re3 yeah you couldn't use them defensively yeah do you know what would make this a non-issue what's that if you missed a dodge you could shove a grenade in their mouth 
yeah. and then not get so fucking destroyed by ten fucking zombies. And that's kind of what I wanted to say <laughs> is that having both of those elements present in some way, shape, or form, and if you have them both present... You can learn. Yeah, but make grenades more scarce. Mm, oh, make, yeah. make the knife break more often, even. Yeah. But there needs yeah, to be... There, there needs to be that, oh yeah, for sure. In a, in a perfect world. <laughs> but it's, it's the yeah, choice. You guys want to watch the knifing simulator? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's watch choice Resident. versus RNG. So what I'll say with it, I absolutely love, I love the defensive tactic because it comes from Resident Evil 1 also, the defensive tactic mm-hmm. with your items. I loved it in Resident Evil 2 Remake. I love that there's, you add the option, you're like, I'm going to bring this flash grenade with me so I have a defense backup. It's actually, it was an item choice in your in your item slot. I loved that. Um, I didn't mind that they got rid of it in RE3 and still had flash grenades as items. Mm-hmm. I didn't mind those. The thing that I minded is they added dodging and it just didn't work. Mm-hmm. The fact that a zombie could lunge at you, like straight at you, like stumbling, falling at you, and you dodge to the side, and then he just kind of, okay, and turns and grabs you. He's it would have, missile. It would have made more sense if the zombies were, once they initiated their attack, that's where they were going. True so you could just dodge. Yeah. Why not make that a fucking thing? Why make it so infuriating to where you have to perfectly time these dodges? You have to fucking Dark Souls these motherfuckers. Like, they yeah. have to be perfectly timed. <laughs> it was stupid. And the fact that you threw a fucking stun grenade in that I couldn't use defensively was just fucking humiliating. Like you slapped me in the face of that. You're like, oh, that stun grenade that was awesome in RE2 because you could use it to not get hit. Here, zombies will sit still for three seconds. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Enjoy that. Like, give me a fucking frag grenade, you pussy bitch. Fuck you, Capcom. <laughs> Dude. All I, so angry. <laughs> all I know is... The way the amount of times I got bit by a zombie and had to do that fucking smashing a bullshit. Yeah. When it felt when it felt like I was so like for instance they're on the ground and I'm like oh I'm just gonna fucking knife them and then I'm like okay now I'm gonna back up and they (laughs) look they're like sitting up and they lunge up yeah I'm like what the fuck and then they're like 360 grab you and you're like this is the most (laughs) agile zombie in the world the other one is like they're laying facing me and I'm like hey. Cut, 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 cut. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to back up now because he's on his fucking knees. No, he fucking lunges and grabs my dick. Yep. On his knees. It, just, just it felt so unfair, dude. It yeah. felt so unfair. It's normal, dude. Rocket propelled zombies. I'm bad at this yep. game and it's, I'm on normal, dude. <laughs> yep. And so that brings us to another critical game function. Uh, ammo conservation. Ammo conservation in RE2 versus RE3. And with that, I actually want to do a point. Did zombies seem more imposing in Resident Evil 2? Because for me, they felt like more of... They felt more of an obstacle in Resident Evil 2. Like, if you saw three zombies coming at you in Resident Evil 2, you were like, fuck. Feels you're like, like, I have to figure something out to deal with it. You're like, there has to be another door I can Yeah, I have to do so. I have to loop around. I have to do something to mm-hmm. deal with it, to mitigate this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I only got six fucking handgun bullets <laughs> to my name. Whereas RE3, it felt like there's they were just like, you know what, here's a nice corridor. Throw like five zombies and they let them just mow down zombies. <laughs> I think it's the equivalent of playing like... I'm trying to think of a good representation of two. But for three, to me, it felt like playing a fucking arcade shooter. Yeah. I'm literally just... like The, the perfect example is a spider fucking den. I literally just walk through the spider den... Just shotgunning and shotgunning and shotgunning all these fucking spiders off the roof. And I'm just like, okay. I'm like, target, 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 target. And then it's like you walk in a room with 10 zombies and you're like, shoot, 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 machine gun. Like, you just don't stop shooting in Resident Evil 3. Yeah. And, like, I remember when I played 2, you're like, bro, I'm just going to tell you right now. Like... I know you love shooting games, and I know you think this is a shooting game. It's not. This is not a shooting game. It's strategy. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, bro, you got your, you got a little bit of ammo. You got a knife. You better figure it out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so like, I'm like walking around playing like a chess game in two. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. in fucking three, I'm just like. Yeah, and that was one of the things I felt anxious when you went through the spider den because you used all of your shotgun ammo in that, and I'm like. He's not going to have any shotgun ammo left for the next section. And then you walk out for the boss fight and they're like, here's 70 shotgun ammo. Do you want shotgun ammo? We got it, motherfucker. What do you want? How much you want? You got all the shotgun ammo, my man. 
you're probably gonna have to come back for how much yeah. ammo we Go left put some in a box you. and come on back. Yeah. You want some gunpowder that you can mix <laughs> later? We can give you some of that. Stupid. Oh, instead of giving you ammo, let's give you the choice of choosing which ammo you want. Yeah. Here's gunpowder and bullets. Enjoy <laughs> both. I know we were joking about going back and getting infinite ammo on the rocket launcher, but it's like, what's wh- the difference? Why do you need it? Yeah. You have infinite ammo for every other weapon. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's infinite ammo? You already have that. <laughs> so, like, I feel like ammo, the ammo, ammo conservation made Resident Evil 2 more of a strategy game. Mm-hmm. Like, you had to strategize where you were going to go, your movement. Some some hallways, you just didn't go down because you were like, I was like, I'll, I'll be back. I'll circle around dude, that one. The perfect example, I guess, one to one is like the fucking liquors, dude. Yeah. The motherfuckers. Liquors were obstacles. Fucked me up in two. It was yes. so good. In three, I just walked up in that one room and killed two of them. Yeah, no problem. With ten other zombies in the room. Don't yeah. forget that. There was all the zombies pouring out of the fucking, like, Nothing. bathroom. And I'm just like, oh, oh, fucking die, motherfuckers. And I'm like, am I still good? Oh, hold on, I got a couple heals. Okay, more shotgun. I'm going still. And it's like... Three heals on you at a time. Ridiculous. The it heals, comes, dude. It comes down to um, Resident Evil 2 Remake was a puzzle horror game, whereas Resident Evil 3 was a action game. Mm-hmm. I would have enjoyed three more literally as an arcade cabinet that I could have enjoyed as like different little small chapter segments yeah. and just removed any any of the other bullshit that was like backtracking here, backtracking there for no fucking reason. Yeah. Like if that's the route they wanted to go, I would have played an RE3 cabinet. Yeah. It was it was a decent shooter. Yeah. It was fun to yeah. shoot with the engine. It was fun to kill a bunch of zombies. Everything else was just Fell yeah. flat. Yeah, it was yeah. like, yeah. Exactly. And I think that's the, the big difference between Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 is that Resident Evil 2 was more of an open area game. It, it gave you these puzzles. You had to figure stuff out. And then you got mm-hmm. rewards for those. And that felt good. And you had to figure out these different, how these items interacted with the things around you. Keys and where you could go once you got keys. And like, mm-hmm. it was such this, like this big strategy game in your head where you're like, I'm going to take these items with me to go here. And then I'm going to bring those back. And then I'm going to grab these ones to go over there. Whereas... Fucking Resident Evil 3 was just go for the was entire there, was time. Was there any puzzle other than the train? The There was the gems that you had to collect. Come on. It man. wasn't a puzzle. You were it going was, straight. They a, walked you right into It was a collect-a-thon. Go find some yeah. items in the map. It wasn't even find them. It was like, this is the only area you can go to. And it Where was, do you think it's going to be? But, like, even in 2, when you got items... So, like, we went into the statue room, and I got the fucking, like, uh, the, scepter. Yeah. Or the arm. And yeah. then I had a scepter and I had to get a gem. I had to put them together. It was like, how long did I walk around with the arm and the scepter? And you guys were like, yeah, yeah you, you gotta, you gotta like do stuff with them. Like I got the gems and I just walked back to the train station. I was like, yeah, hey. obviously. This oh wait. Here. And I get ammo from the machine. It's a vending machine from Borderlands. <laughs> get you a car. It's where cars live. Like the only puzzle that I can even remember in two, three was the train. And like, the only thing that was wrong about that is like we just misread the numbers on the train yeah. tracks. Yeah. But like And it wasn't it wasn't a real puzzle and there wasn't a real reward. It was like you get to continue with the story. Hey, yeah. The other thing was like cool. go get the vaccine. They're in two different spots. Okay, put them in this machine. Press A. Beep 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 beep, beep done. And yeah. you like just level them out. Yeah. And I didn't even I just literally pressed the button and leveled was, them out. It was like the most min it was literally like like Sorry, go ahead, Nick. I was just going to say, you remember the liquid puzzle in two? Yeah. How you had to flip them, like, between yep. the sections to fill them with each other? Mm-hmm. That one, the RE3 puzzle was, the answer was literally low, medium, high, or, like, low, high, <laughs> yeah. medium, and that was it. Like, yeah. it didn't have to be in any sequential order. It was just those three buttons being in those positions. It felt like the puzzles for Resident Evil 3 were, like, like Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 were doing a test. Or was were like writing a, a paper, except mm-hmm. Resident Evil Two wrote the paper yeah. and then like gave it to Resident Evil Three, and there he was like change some of the stuff so that way we so that way the answers are kind of the yeah. same, but yeah. but so the teacher doesn't know. And Resident Evil Three was like okay, and it was like okay, yeah. killing zombies, kill zombies. It's there. You said it. <laughs> it was I I hated. I did not like Resident Evil Three. I was so mad at that they took all the puzzles out of it. Like, Resident Evil's supposed to be a puzzle game. Yeah. Horror. Zombies. Like, that's the order. Like, puzzles. Puzzles are the main <laughs> driving force of the game. Unfortunately, that was how the original RA3 was. 
published, how it was developed, how it was designed. They mm-hmm. made that conscious effort to just try out the more adventure side, the yeah. more, like you're saying, kind of almost even arcade rail shooter and like, style. And, but yeah, and that's that makes sense. Like it was already through as a remake of that, but it's mm-hmm. a remake. Yeah. You change, have the choice to change that stuff. Exactly. You and have you can you can make it a better game. <laughs> they did it. Yep. And I feel like Resident Evil Three Resident Evil Three was just Nemesis. Like that was the game. Yeah. Nemesis was the game. Mm-hmm. So uh how'd you enjoy Nemesis coming back seeing your old buddy? Because I know you had more experience with Resident Evil Three than anybody else. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> as a child I remember like vividly playing and being in the police station and having Nemesis fucking come over the rocket launcher and just absolutely fucking clap me dude and i'm like oh my fucking god and then he would like chase you through the streets and everything Mm -hmm. and maybe this happened in that version but it wasn't apparent because of all these fixed camera angles but like in resident evil 3 remake nemesis just kind of appears wherever he needs to be whenever it's convenient like you walked over a fucking little square on the floor that's like, oh shit, he's too far from Nemesis. Hurry up, put him in front of him right now. Yeah. So he jumps in and does some shit. Like, it's even a point where near the train station, I remember vividly going through the back alley. Oh, and man. this was where Joey was bitching. He's like, bro, you mm-hmm. have to keep Nemesis in your back vision and watch him. I'm like, all right, fuck it. So I'm like watching Nemesis. This dude just literally Superman straight up fucking floats over the fence and is waiting for me at the other side of the alley. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is this shit? Is he Spider-Man? Is he Superman? Is he, what is he? Is he a zombie? And I'm just like, it just feels so fake. And like, it wasn't even scary. It was like more of annoying. It's like, oh, okay, now I'm going to have to try to use the dodge mechanic so I don't get killed. (laughs) And then it's like... I was just going to outrun it, but now I actually have to try and fucking dodge. (laughs) Thanks. Cool. (laughs) If I I as a player can outrun him, I feel like I should be able to outrun him. Mm -hmm. Like the tyrant. Yeah, and it's like when I played Resident Evil 2, as much as I hate a mechanic like tyrant, we've played it in a couple other games, like... An enemy on a map that actively seeks me out with rules Mm -hmm. is more terrifying than something that just pops up in existence. And, like, Tyrant, bro, like, the fucking sound design, man. Oh, my (laughs) fucking God. You're literally walking around this fucking police station, and you can hear him searching for you. Yeah, opening doors. You can hear doors opening. Going upstairs, footsteps. You can hear everything, and you're just like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, you're like, I I love those moments where you're walking, you're like, oh, you stop moving, you're like, shh. And yeah, you guys were like, what are you talking? I have my headphones on, and you you guys are like, what what are you doing? And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, stop talking, bro. There's none of that in three. In three, it was like, I'm running, boom, he's in front of me, cool. I'm running, he fucking hits me with a fucking arm that's a thousand feet long. Yeah. He just slaps you with a tentacle, like, cool, man. But like, Tyrant, dude, oh my God, bro. Mm-hmm. This dude was so fucking gangster that... I have never been as afraid of an enemy in a game as him, dude. <laughs> and he didn't really... He didn't have a tentacle hand. No. He, didn't he have just a, walked. He didn't have a medicine. rocket launcher. He, he was, was like, like... He was patient. Yo, let me put my gloves on. I'm about to bitch slap this hoe. This guy <laughs> fucked. That guy fucked. When zombies knocked me down, he was patient and waited and gave me a chance <laughs> to run. Was. It, was a zombie. it was one moment where a zombie jumped on you and you're fighting him. And you just try to walk up and just like, stop. He's like... And I'm just like, oh my god! Oh, no. Nemesis is like, <laughs> Nemesis fuck is trying to. Nemesis hit you while yeah. you're already being grappled. Because Nemesis could Dude, damage the zombies. So Tyrant, Tyrant could also, but he he didn't. didn't whenever you're being grappled, he didn't want to. Yeah, he he wanted you to know he was in control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh. like the the chase mechanics of the characters. Nemesis was just fake as fuck. Yeah. Like, I just hated it. It was not... It was not a fun thing to try to outrun. It was more of an it was, annoyance. Yeah, it was just like a, a barrier to entry to get to the next point. Yeah. Neither challenging nor immersive. Mm-mm. Yeah. And like, as Joey said, at least for if I remember correctly, like, the tyrant section that he played was much longer because just like other factors where I was just like... So honed in, I was like, I'm just gonna try to get to the story. I'm gonna kite him over here. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go do this thing. And like, you, you I got happened to go to the right puzzle. You happened to go straight to the clock tower, which is what you needed to do to get to the section where Tyrant wasn't there. 
Whereas I went and I did all of the other puzzles first. So, so I, the whole I dealt time. with them throughout all the other puzzles that you did after Timer was gone. Yep. I did those while Timer was chasing me. Yeah. And it's just like the ability to do that, mm-hmm. I think, speaks volumes. Where like Nemesis is just like, bro, just fucking on rails and we're chasing you. Those. We're just going to chase you right to the end, bro. Yep. We'll It'll transform. Yeah, it's, it's nothing different. Yeah. For every place. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I love Siren and I hated Nemesis. I thought it was dumb. And, like, not to, like, I mean, people probably play the game, not trying to spoil it, but, like, the rest of the game was just fucking Nemesis. You just fight Nemesis in this form and that form and this form and that form. Yeah. And it's, like, cool, dude. Boring. And yeah. your, the, your the bosses for that entire game was Nemesis. Yeah. There were other bosses. Mm-hmm. And the end boss fight is, like, boring. The most scripted shit I've ever seen and in my life. Easy and stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Laser friend. Yeah, it's like the most scripted event I've ever mm-hmm. done and then like in Tyrant when you fight him near the end like that shit was fucking scary. Yeah. Because right. I'm like trying to cut him and shoot him and I'm fucking rocketing and I blow myself up yeah. and shit. Especially right after getting done with fucking Big Eye Man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to fight the super form of him and then like 20 minutes later here's Tyra super form and like he's like I'm oh, bad on. bitch. Tyra literally takes his fucking trench coat off he's like bro this is the body of someone who fucks my man. <laughs> takes the fucking fedora off. But it's yeah. just like it felt like an actual fight yeah. fighting mm-hmm. Tyrant. Nemesis just seemed and like Nemesis was DLC like this is an interactive cinematic I would have just rather watched Nemesis at the end as a cinematic yeah like something I, cool I had no me. value I got nothing out of the fight it wasn't something that was hard yeah I didn't, I didn't feel any satisfaction when you killed Nemesis I'm just like cool that's done now oh and then when we did kill him you just fucking rail a giant fucking hole right through him it's like the coolest fucking scene <sighs> in a movie and it's like Woo! It's like ten it's like hallway. It's like yeah, the hallway of fire through the lab, the laboratory, and uh, you're like, holy fuck, that was. I was like, damn, I can get on board with that. Like after we blew that motherfucker up, and I'm like, dun, 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 I'm gonna finish this game. I'm walking out the hallway, and I get to the hallway, and it's just like invisible wall. It's an invisible <laughs> wall. I'm like, you know what? Added insult <laughs> to injury to that whole experience. We were so disappointed that we couldn't walk through the hole in the wall because that's how the in fucking the game right. should have ended. So we walked all the way out and then explored Got the beginning demo. of that section. Yeah, and then we went, had to go back in, and it's just a very Whoa. slight hallway off of that laser <laughs> beam. So and it's just like, no, you can leave. It's so dumb. Cool. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like, bro, like... How do you see this and not use this? Yeah. Like, blow the hole so I can walk through it as, like, an exit. That's fucking cool. Badass as fuck. That's actually fucking badass Resident Evil cheese. Mm -hmm. I want that cheese. Mm -hmm. Another thing that Resident Evil 2 actually did that I didn't see in Resident Evil 3, which I should have if if it was in it, was the zombie, like, amputation sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It felt like the zombie bodies, you could, like, shoot pieces off of them. Yeah. And 2. And at least, at least from what I experienced and remember of like a day ago, <laughs> like into there's a very vivid scene. We're in the fucking, we're in the the morgue, man. And I'm like, oh fuck, this is terrifying. I'm like, the fuck, yeah. I'm hearing them pounding on the fucking thing to get out of the morgue. And I'm like, this is so fucking spooky. I'm like, all right, dude. I was like, I pull them out and I, I see their feet move, and I'm like, you're still alive, bro. And I'm like, hold on a second. I leave it there and I'm like, dude, 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 and I cut their fucking feet off, yeah. bro. And then I pull the motherfucker out and he's like, and he falls on the ground and he's like crawling. crawling he's fucking around. crawling. I'm like, this is hilarious. I think we left him there the whole yeah, game. Yeah, we left him. So like just things like that are like shooting him in the foot and hand, like just yeah. knocking parts off their body. I'm like, bro, I think I knifed Every, Every zombie, single the zombie in the field. <laughs> Not a single yes. leg came off. No. Dude, literally, it was Ridiculous. the most, it was the most, pre- almost, almost the most predictable thing. It was, even the fucking deaths weren't consistent. <clears throat> you shoot the zombie, they fall on the ground. You knife them three times, they then either do an animation to sit up, or they do an animation to, like, spaz. You fucking hit them three times again, and then they either fall on the floor, and then they get up again, or they do that, like, and they, like, roll over, and then they lay back down, and they're dead. And it's like, I'm fucking knifing this dude nine times in the leg, and nothing's happening to him. Fucking f- knock them fucking feet off so I can just walk away. Yeah. But no, they get up and fucking walk after you. I'm just like, 
It was so lame. Just fucking let me do some shit in here, bro. Mm. Yeah, I did like the function of amp- like shooting off legs mm-hmm. in Resident Evil 2 because it actually worked as a strategy, too, to get around zombies. You could shoot them like two or three times in a leg yeah. and they would stumble and they could just go around yeah. them. Which actually made sense because it made more strategy to the game. Mm-hmm. But there was no backtracking in Resident Evil 3. You didn't have to just... Like explore certain areas to an ex- like to an barely. extensive extent, so barely. Yeah, so like there was no point in fucking having to shoot zombies in the legs. You just always took off their fucking heads. If there was an achievement for killing every zombie in the game, I think I got it. <laughs> you did, yeah. You killed every zombie in that Damn game. Here, everyone. I don't think there was one that's maybe in the last fight you might not have killed like the last one or two zombies. Very beginning, there had to be like a zombie or two in the maybe. general city. That maybe you just like before you got unlimited ammo cheat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like super. It was actually like open. Yeah. That like half the last yeah. half of the game was like a fucking corridor where it's like, well, I have to go through them. Mm-hmm. And like, and you saying that part about the uh, the morgue actually cements the part. I wasn't. I wasn't on board with this one, but um, the aesthetics of Resident Evil 2 compared to Resident Evil 3, I felt like Resident Evil 2 was actually scary. Like, I felt like I got scared in Resident Evil 2 just by, like, environments. Whereas Resident Evil 3, there wasn't a part where I was scared. Like, Resident Evil 2, so I just want to go over real quick, just bullet, just run through Resident Evil 2, parts that I actually found spooky. First part, you crawl up underneath the little garage pull up, it's so fucking dark, you're trying to turn, like, the lights on, you have to run through, like, those little quarters. That was spooky as shit because it's dark as hell. You're literally going by flashlight view. Like, that was such a cool part. Scary as hell. Morgue was fucking scary. The garage when all the fucking... When the dog's out, scary as fuck. Or the scene when you walk in the fucking dog room and all the cages are open. Yeah. And you're like... Oh, shit. Yep. I love the liquor in RE2 because you could choose to go around them because they couldn't see you you could just move slowly Mm -hmm. and they were they would interact dude they would be like "Uh," and like look at you like "Uh." was there ever a scene in three with just liquors because the only time i remember them was when the fucking police station yeah but the 10 zombies busted through the bathroom and the liquor but it's like i couldn't have even made the decision to actively sneak by you couldn't couldn't be sneaky because it was like there was already zombies attacking you yeah. yeah Yeah, no, you couldn't do that in Resident Evil 3. It was all run and gun, baby. Dude, the liquor was so throwaway in 3, bro. It was. It was, it was there just, for one scene just to connect the games. And, like, I feel like they just placed these zombies around. Like, Resident Evil 2, zombies were strategically placed in spots to make you play a certain way. Resident Evil 3, they were just like, throw five zombies here, a liquor there, tough frog man there. Like, just throw four more zombies over here. Just let them gun all these zombies down. It doesn't matter. It was so fucking stupid. I hated it. I think to speak to the point of like it being more like atmospheric scary. Going into the morgue, I was like, oh, there's probably a zombie in here. But I never once was like, there's zombies in the fucking things. And then you hear, doo, 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 yeah. boom, boom, boom. And it's like, oh my God. Just the fucking visuals and the sound, dude. The sound design was so fucking good in that game, bro. Yeah. And you're just like, oh my god. You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm just fucking, I'm fucking leave the room now. Yeah. But it's like, like that sort of situation and then you're in R- RE3 and you're walking through test tubes and it's yeah. like, well, I guess I wonder when these guys are going to come out. Yeah. And then on the way back, they all bust out. Yeah. And I think just as far as aesthetics concerned, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't like, 75% of RE3 on fire. Yeah. Like, it's such a bright game just yep. for that alone. I feel like it's almost always something is on fire. Yeah. It's fire everywhere, dude. It feels like the backdraft game in Universal. <laughs> <laughs> Put out the fires! Yeah. And even, uh, like, Resident Evil 2 had so many good shadow lit areas where you mm-hmm. could, like, shadows would actually cast off of stuff and you could see, like, zombies around corners. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, that's spooky. Or, like, you'd walk past a window and, like, you'd do, do, do against the window and, do, do, psh, and then, like, come through the window. We only got that one or two times total. One dude the around the corner who's, like, in the dude's Yeah, asshole. right at the very beginning. That was in the demo. Yeah. I think that the the sound design really added. RE2, they utilized it sound was, really well. Whoever did the sound design, too, is just fucking... You need to get sound for stealth elements, period. Horror, horror is all elements. Yeah. yeah. You gotta utilize them. And I may, maybe some of that is like, there's always 10 fucking zombies on the screen in three. So you just hear fucking zombies everywhere. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Definitely so, two is scarier than three. Oh, yeah. 
for sure, hundred percent. And uh, I feel like so Resident Evil Two has so much to it as a game. Yeah. So Resident Evil Two had Leon Kennedy's story, mm-hmm. which had his whole story through. Um, you go to the police station, you go down into the sewers, and then you go to the hive, and it had all that. It had Claire's side of the story, where Claire's in the police station. She goes to the orphanage, where you find, like, the little girl, and then the little girl is with Claire in that storyline. And then you go to the hive, so, like, you get different aspects. Like, you get a whole different story as Claire. You learn more stuff about Claire, which we didn't have even played yet. Would, I would love to go back and play Claire's version because you actually see more of the story too. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. And then once you beat Leon's story, you get a Leon story part two where it's not even just items are mixed up. You actually start in a different spot. You get different weapons. All the items are mixed up. Puzzles are, are rearranged in different spots. And you get a Claire part two once you beat her part one. So you get a whole other story with both of them. They actually add little story components. So you actually get little t- more more little tidbits of mm-hmm. their story with it. Also, you get a whole different play style because they get different weapons. You get a whole different like uh, unique play through because all the items are in different spots. So you have to actually find you. You can't just be like, oh, this one was over there. They're all in different spots, all mixed up. And then after that, you've got a little challenge mode as three mini games. That you can go through is like challenges. Like you start, you're timed on it, you start, and like you have to make it through like these challenges with certain amounts of ammo. And they have like little like gumball machines where you can like, uh, you can actually buy ammo with them. And it's, su- it's super fun. It's really cool. It's really fucking hard. It's a fun new aspect of it. Has different unlockable characters. You can play as a piece of fucking tofu in Resident Evil 2. Remake. You unlock as a piece of tofu and run through the game. Zombies are biting on your tofu. Oh my god! Hilarious. You you get different like unlockable, unlimited ammos. Like there's so much more fun stuff you can do in Resident. Resident Evil Two Remake probably has between thirty and fifty hours mm-hmm. of content to it. So when that game came out, sixty dollars for thirty to fifty hours of gameplay. Resident Evil Three Remake has one campaign. Yep. Yeah. You can play through on three different difficulties that I know of. You might unlock more. They have daily missions, dude. You can get on and do oh, daily challenges. What are the daily challenges? Go and kill those. Like ten zombies. Holy hell, dude. That, would, that sounds you get, like so you much You get fun. some money so you can buy an infinite rocket launcher. Oh my god, I need that. So you get one campaign that you play through once. Yeah. Six hours. Sixty dollars. So... All I'm going to say is just taking into account what I've played Mm -hmm. and purchasing. I don't think I purchased two, but I purchased three. If I was to buy them both for 60 bucks today and I played both of those and experienced them how I did, Mm -hmm. I would have been like, okay, on two, I would have been like, that was worth 60 bucks. Just playing the game and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Playing Resident Evil 3, I would have been like, yeah, I'm not going to buy the next one. Yeah. So Resident Evil, like I, I had a, I had a good time because I was playing with you guys. You know, I didn't hate it. Mm-hmm. I just, I wouldn't have gone out. Of, I won't go out of my way to buy the next one on day one, like I did RE three. Yeah, we played RE two. I was like, holy fuck, that was amazing. I need to play whatever the next thing comes out of. Yep. Now I'm just like, do I need to? Yeah. So yeah, what do you think? Yeah. I just think that speaks to the fact that. These two games are actually being developed in tandem. They had mm-hmm. staggered the, the production the start of uh, three when uh, two was maybe like halfway done. Yeah. Because they knew they were going to use the same engine. They knew yeah. that this, this was going to be the plan. It just feels like the lack of content in three. I don't see why there's any reason why they wouldn't have done the same things for two as far as like having B routes and stuff and all of that in three aside from being rushed. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it was an actual aesthetic or technical decision to be like, let's just not add anything like that. Yeah. It, it really just feels like people were really just, uh, too demanding. <laughs> yeah. Even like they couldn't wait to yeah. release it. Like the, the hype that they were experiencing, like I think the tide, probably would have turned against them yeah. at a certain point. People are like, I'm not buying this game now. But you got Project Resistance with it. And that was a... <gasps> that could be a... 
No. That could be a let's no. play, dude. That We're not going to talk mm-hmm. about it? Let's not talk about that. It's a thumbs down, man. It, it really hurts my heart because as somebody who played so much Dead by Daylight, I, lo- I enjoy games like that, and it just really fell short <laughs> of being anything yeah, completely so acceptable. I, I feel like um, I feel like Resident Evil 2 was a well-thought-out, people had passion, the people who created had passion towards mm-hmm. the project. It was so thought out, so thorough. Like, the game was strategized. Like, whenever they were building it, they were like, we're going to put this up here because this, this here, because this. These zombies are going to go here, here, and here because that will force the character to do this. And, like, it was such a well-thought-out game, polished. It felt like that one actually had care put into it. And I felt like Resident Evil 3 was completely rushed. And it was just, it felt like a fucking money grab. It felt completely like a money grab. And I don't know if that's because it was rushed or if, or if they were just, like, Fuck it. I kind of think... Uh, I agree with Alex in the sense that RE3 Remake at this point does really feel like additional content to RE2 Remake. Yeah, feels like a DLC. Maybe people would have felt different about it if they released it in such a way as that. Of being like just added on to RE2. Yeah, with this it. is now like the remake collection. You know what I mean? I don't think I would have minded if they were like, if you already had RE2 and then they were like thirty dollars. Here's RE3. Yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, but um, it, that is the point that I saw. I bought Resident Evil 2 Remake Day One. I actually played mm-hmm. a few hours of it Day One. Yeah, and I actually went online and was like looking up stuff about it, and like mm-hmm. within the first week of it dropping, and the number one comment I saw for people who are who are also playing Resident Evil 2 Remake was, mm-hmm. this is great, when's Resident Evil 3 Remake coming out? And I'm like, this game literally dropped less than a week ago. Yeah. So I do feel like Resident Evil 3 was completely brushed, but it it's no excuse. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't hide behind that. Closing comments? I think Resident Evil 3 Remake is worth uh, 10 or less. If you can pick it up for less than 10 on like a, on like a Steam sale, mm-hmm. go ahead. Don't pay anything, don't pay 10 or more dollars for it, ever. Closing thoughts, don't play Resident Evil 3 Remake unless you're a super, 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 super big fan of Resident Evil and you want to experience it. If you want to play a good one, play two. Or play Resident Evil 3 if you've never played a Resident Evil game and you just want to shoot fucking zombies. I mean, that's true. <laughs> but even still, there's impediments that make it not fun. That's very just true. go play a game that's built for shooting zombies. That's true. So. Dan closing. I think my closing comment uh, is I definitely enjoyed two remake more than three remake, but I really feel down. I feel like it comes down to the source material. And at the end of the day, again, my personal opinion, Resident Evil 2 had less to work on as far as script and dialogue were Mm -hmm. concerned specifically. Whereas like you were saying about how three feels rushed, I feel like if they had more time, those are the two things that they could have worked on that would make it more enjoyable as a whole. It's just that that's the original story. That's how the original three was. They kind of, like you're saying, two is fucking awesome. So they're like, let's make it shitty. And then four is fucking awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If they would have just invested more time to change some stuff, it probably would have been more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Well, we're looking forward to Resident Evil 4 remake, guys. So we're hoping that comes pretty. When is Resident Evil 4 remake coming out? Capcom, when is Resident Evil 4 remake coming out? Send us a tweeter at, at dot slash rag.com. Yeah, Twitter us. Wait, Twitter that's, us. Not, that's the website. That's not a tweet. Huh? Tweet at us. Dot slash rag.com. Tweet us at, at dot slash frag. Give us a code. <laughs> Please don't make us spend money on another fucking game, dude. God. Unless it's good, look. Yeah, you owe us. Look, if we play four and it's good, I will PayPal you the money. Send me your Oof. PayPal. Ooh. But if it's not good, I'm still gonna buy it. Yeah, we're still gonna spend fucking hundred twenty dollars <laughs> on it, dude. Fuck me. Hell yeah, brother. Well, that was episode seven of the Now We Gaming podcast. Thanks for joining us, guys. We are out of here. It's hard as fuck. It's back, baby. Beach. <laughs> this was episode one.